Now to see the results of this, if you go to new, and we're going to say physical input. Now this brings up our massive MIDI input that has all of our total physical MIDI inputs. And basically what's happened is we've just moved this from the clicks and ports area to our mixer layer. So you'll notice that our physical input is still connected elsewhere to another destination. So we basically just moved this from the clicks and ports layer and have placed it in the mixer layer. So what I want to do is I want to take this connection and I'm going to break it from its other destination and I'm just going to place it in my macro in here. That way my sum output from my MIDI interface is being now directly fed into the new object that we just designed. And I'm going to take this macro out, which is the output of our object, and I'm going to attach it to my soft lead up here. Now I'm going to colorize my soft lead, or I'm sorry, I'm going to colorize my output in yellow, which is, tends to be my output definition. And I'm actually just going to move these over so that we can see them a little better. Just going to move these over so that we can see them a little better. There we go. So now, if I play my Ewe, notice that I still have the same result. My fader is jumping up and down. But let's turn it on. I've now turned on my switch, and watch what happens. So my fader does not move. So congratulations, we have just filtered continuous co controller number 7 out of the MIDI pathway. Okay, there's one last step that we want to take, which is that we want to pack this into a macro. Right now we have six different objects in this setup. It's a little unwieldy to move around. It's a little unwieldy to transfer from one place to another. It's also very confusing when you get 10, 20, 30, 50 of these on a page. So the beauty of this is, is that we can pack this into a macro. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the name from the fader here simply by clicking on it and deleting the name. And then I'm going to drag and close all of this to select it. And then I'm going to go up here to New, and I'm going to select New Macro. And notice what that does. That gives us a box around all of these objects. It says Macro In, Macro Out. That shows you your first and last object in the signal path. And I'm just going to grab this little corner here, and I'm going to wrap that around our button as neatly as I can. And I'm just going to rename it. I'm going to command click on it. And I'm going to say kill volume. And there is our macro object. So I'm going to now reconnect this. Again, if I turn it off. Or if I turn it on. And there we have it, our volume kill switch for our MIDI environment. Tune in next week. We're going to continue this process in designing more inline widgets to manipulate and edit and change the MIDI information that is flowing into and out of your Logic environment. Until then, have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week.